Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. Whether you are just starting out or you've been in business for some time, if you are experiencing a lack of growth, a lack of success, you might want to consider niching down. With so many coaches and online service providers, it's more important now than ever that your message is clear and people readily recognize that you hold the key to the solution they need. How can you accomplish this? Well, the key is niching down. And that's what we're going to talk all about today. When you niche down, your message becomes uber clear and you have more opportunity to stand out amidst the sea of online noise. So what does it mean to niche down? If you think you can help everyone, you ultimately help no one. Oh, that's a zinger, but it is a harsh reality. When you talk to everyone, the people that you can best help may not recognize that you are speaking to them. Your message should be so clear that it both attracts your ideal client and repels those who are not a good fit. Niching down means basically narrowing your scope, but that doesn't mean you are limiting your business. There is no need to fear a decrease in revenue or experience a scarcity mindset. It means that you become so clear on what you do and who you serve that there is no doubt by anyone who comes across your content or your website. When that happens, when you have that clarity, your best fit clients will know that you are the one to follow and ultimately hire. So with that said, How do you approach narrowing your scope and identifying your niche? Well, the best way to do so is to think about an hourglass. The top of the hourglass is full. Just like your brain, your mind is full of ideas and ways that you can help many people. But here's where your message is unclear. Until you have narrowed it down with specificity. Now think of the center of the hourglass where it narrows. Very little can pass through. When you niche down, you narrow your ideas and the people that you want to and can best serve. Like the grains of sand in the hourglass, you may spend very little time in this space or you may spend quite a bit of time. This will depend on how quickly or slowly you niche down and then expand your business and the offerings that you are going to to have. Once you have niched down, you will experience an expansion of success. You will develop specificity to attract the right people into your business, into your community. After some time, you may feel ready to open the gate to more people and some more services. This is the bottom of the hourglass where ideas and opportunities can be broadened once you have built the foundation of your business. This, it's important to start small and then expand. And this philosophy can be very beneficial, especially for those of us who are multi-passionate. Why? Is niching down important? Well, I've alluded to this previously, but the reason to niche down is to provide complete clarity for your audience that you wish to influence, that you ultimately want to buy from you. When you niche down, you get very specific with your message, who you serve and what you offer. You will increase your revenue opportunities and have more significant impact. Your best fit clients will recognize that you are the one who they need to solve their utmost challenge. Likewise, those 
who are not a best fit for you in your business will not contact you. They'll understand that you're not the right one for them. Ultimately, this saves you time and money, and it improves customer service because you aren't wasting other people's time getting on a call with you or applying for your offer. This doesn't mean, however, that they will not follow you. They may stick around. They may find your information very helpful, or they may know others who you are a good fit for, and then they will refer you. There are three facets to effectively niching down. When you niche down, focus on these three key things. One, who your best fit client is. Two, your offers and pricing. And three, your message. So who is the person that you can serve well, feel fulfilled when working with, and help achieve the results that they desire? Once you have defined your best fit client, identify their pain points, their needs, wants, and desires. Your brand message will be crafted from these essential details, in addition to the differentiating factors about yourself and your business. Everything you communicate to your community and target audience should be specific to the pain points, needs, wants, and desires that they have. Now that you have clarity around your best fit client and know what they need and want and expect from an offer, you can consider designing your offer. So there are different things to consider. First, the type of offer that you're going to present. Is this offer a short-term or long-term offer? Is it an online course? Is it live coaching? Is it one-to-one or is it group? Is it a self-study program? The list can go on and on and on because there are so many different ways that you could serve your clients. But you have to identify what is going to be best for them, give them the best results, and what is going to be best for you and the time that you spend. What is the duration of your offer? Is it a one-time call? Is it that you meet weekly or bi-weekly? Is it a month-long program? Is it three months, six months, nine months, a year, et cetera? This will vary depending on what you need, the time you need to achieve the results with your clients. It will also depend on what they expect and what they're going to need in terms of time to get the best results. So for example, you could provide a, an offer that is um, a one-time strategy call. Okay, that can be very effective if the person on the other end of the call is going to take your advice and implement it. Oftentimes, however, people will do something like that, get on a call, but then they don't take the initiative to implement after the fact. And if they don't have a recording of everything you said or have poorly written notes, they may not even be clear on what they're supposed to do. So without that ability to ask more questions or well, without the accountability, oftentimes they won't get the results that they need or that they want. And so maybe that one-time offer isn't as effective for your client or for you to be able to say you got XYZ results as what one might think. So that's just one, one thing to consider when you're thinking about designing your offer. So next is your pricing. What income bracket does your best fit client fall into? What money mindset do they have? Are they eager to invest in themselves and their business? depending on what kind of coach you are. Your price point will be determined by who your best fit client is and the duration of time that you work with them. In addition, you have to consider perceived value. What value will your clients get from working with you? And will they be able to see the ROI 
how quickly will they be able to see the return on their investment? It is crucial for your best fit clients to understand the return on investment. How will working with you help them achieve effective change? Whether that is increased revenue, additional clients, lifestyle transformation, improved quality of life, etc. That result will be dependent on the type of business you have. I have included in the show note a link to another episode and a blog on ROI. You will find that episode so valuable because I give really great statistics that will help you not only calculate ROI, but also be able to relay ROI and the significant impact you can have and and how your clients can see that return on investment so that they want to invest more readily in you and your program. So now we're down to results. What are the results that your offer is going to provide? What can you help your clients achieve? As I mentioned before, perceived value is crucial for determining your pricing and crafting your message. The other thing to consider is yourself, your time. The last thing you want to do is price an offer so low that you start to feel resentful of the time you're spending to get these incredible results for your clients. You have to not only factor in your time, but your energy and everything you're putting into serving these people. Think about the lifetime of information that you have garnered. This all factors into your pricing. It's not just about the time you're spending with them on a day-to-day basis or monthly basis or whatever your, your offer looks like. You have to also factor in yourself so that you don't start to resent that time and then experience burnout. All right, last but not least, your message. Once your best fit client is defined, you have your offers created, you can craft your message. So what do you do with that message once you've crafted it? You have to share it. The primary place to share your message will be your website. Key phrases and an SEO strategy will help your best fit clients find you online. You can also share your message on other platforms like social media or Pinterest or YouTube or through blog posts, guest blogging, being a podcast guest or being a podcast host. But that message should definitely be on your website. The evergreen content should be on your website so that you can increase your visibility on search engines and demonstrate your authority and grow the no love and trust factor faster. All right, in summary, what is the benefit of niching down? It is specificity. As you focus on building the foundation of your business, you'll see results faster because of improved client clarity. This in turn will allow you to generate more revenue and experience success faster. As your business grows, You can then expand your client base and your offers without jeopardizing your success. The key is to build your community based on your expertise and the primary solutions that you offer, that you provide for your best fit clients. As that community grows, you have more opportunities to serve more people in unique ways. And as that community grows and you have clients that are satisfied, you have testimonies from them, you can start to see what they need next and expand your services from there. All right. I have included in the show notes a link to a free ebook, 10 Strategies to Grow Your Business Without Social Media. You don't want to be on social media. This ebook gives you some really great and solid ideas on how to communicate your message to the world so that you can connect with your best fit clients and grow your business. So be sure and check that out. The link is in the show notes. Also, there are links to additional episodes that are related to either niching down or 
creating business success, crafting your message, and just making sure that that foundation is laid so that you can continue to attract as many best fit clients as possible and grow your business for sustainable success and a lifetime of limitless earning potential. Thank you for being here today, friends. It was an honor to spend time with you and know that you're listening. I appreciate you. And if you found this information helpful, please share it with anyone in your community that it might help. Together, we can spread that the information and create that ripple effect of good in the world. If you feel so inclined, a rating and review would be super, super appreciated as well just because that helps us reach more people and help more people achieve success. Thank you again for being here and I'll see you all next week. And that's a wrap friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me and be sure and visit the website therobingraham.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.